Hate to break your crayons, but we're 15 years into the 21st century. Shouldn't we have made a little more progress on this whole clean energy thing? I'm Al Gore, and I'm here to scare you about global warming. I mean, you don't have to be a tree hugger to appreciate it. Clean energy is common sense, even for this guy. But today, renewable sources are less than 10% of the energy supply in the U.S. Why? <laughs> Is it because we don't have the technology? No! We have the technology. Is it incompetent government bureaucrats? No! Fossil fuel companies? No! God, please, no! Martians? No! Kimye? No! God! Here's some science. Yes, science! It's because of a little thing called intermittency. What? Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Here's how the power grid works. It's more than just science. We generate power, right? Comes from coal, natural gas, nuclear, wind, solar, etc. We make energy, empower our cities, our homes, and this guy's hair dryer. It's science. Here's the problem. Even in 2015, there's no efficient way to store a lot of energy, no matter where it comes from. Even if it came from your pet hamster, Alan. Think about it. The sun shines and the wind blows only some of the time. Wise guys say, we can give you 12 hours of clean energy. We just can't tell you which 12 hours. A well, wise guy, eh? Ah! Yeah, the sun is bright when it's out. But if we can't store that energy, what do we have to use when the sun goes down? OMG. We're talking dirty, nasty things that are not the sun. And that's why right now, we really can't use renewable energy on a large scale. That's intermittency. And that's not the only problem. Let's do some grid math. Here's Steve. Steve is probably like you. He's got a toaster, a laptop, a fridge, an espresso machine, and a gourmet s'mores maker. Okay, you probably don't have the s'mores maker. But anyway, he uses 11,000 kilowatt hours of energy every year. Add it all up, and people in developed countries use 89,200 terawatt hours. What'd you say? A bolt of lightning! Actually, that's like 64 billion bolts of lightning hitting at the same time. Whoa. And our need for energy is only growing. How can I have any the power? It's about time for another chart. That makes you... Chopper. With all these sources of energy right now, we have capacity for all the Steves of the world. But that just won't work in the future. Here's Sally. Sally lives in booming places of the world like China, India, or Africa. As she becomes connected to the modern world, soon Sally will have access to a fridge, a toaster, a laptop, and more. People's lives are getting better, but we know that means our energy usage will soar. What we have now isn't good enough. We have to increase our energy capacity. And if we don't, we simply won't be able to supply what we need. That means blackout. Sounds like we better figure something out. Spoiler alert, this video's got an answer and it's magical. It's a battery. A battery could store energy when the sun is out or the wind is blowing. Then we could use that good, clean energy whenever we need it. Now that's magical. It's probably worth a couple of karma points. And we're not talking these batteries or these. We're talking big batteries, enough to power a town. If these guys fell on you, they would hurt. And we're talking self-sufficient cities, developing economies in Africa and India with clean electricity and no grid. We're talking access to refrigeration and the internet for Sally. We could finally have solar panels and wind farms everywhere. We're talking a roundhouse kick to the face for global warming and dirty energy. Basically magic. So how do we make this big battery work? Well, it's a little more complicated than a couple of wires and a potato. Let's talk about the three things that are the holy grail of batteries. One, we've got to use common ingredients. Two, it's got to be reliable. And three, it's got to be safe. It needs to be made of things we have lots of. There needs to be mountains and mountains of the stuff. Carbon, manganese, zinc, sodium, hydrogen, oxygen, iron. Otherwise, using more rare materials makes our battery too expensive. Today, the batteries we have can cost up to $400 for every kilowatt hour of energy stored. That's tough to make work. It needs to be reliable. Not good if the battery that is powering your whole city goes out. And many batteries break, leak, or decompose over time. And it can't blow up. When you're talking about energy, it's harder than you think. Lots of people have tried to make a battery, but it turns out that making an affordable, reliable, and safe battery is tough. But here's the good part. We have a superhero. Actually, more like an engineering badass. Meet Yushan Yan. Yushan has been at Caltech and the University of Delaware, 
He's built desalinization membranes for LG and won an award for fuel cell design from the U.S. Department of Energy. Not once, but twice. And Yushan has built a battery that is the holy grail. We call it Switch. Here are the specs. Switch is made of stuff we've got piles of. And that means it's cheap. Likely less than a third of the cost of other big batteries to operate. Ask any scientist. That's what they say we need to make a big battery work. Plus, it's reliable. Like Queen Elizabeth in a Honda reliable. And it won't blow up. So Switch can be a breakthrough. A battery can solve many of our clean energy problems and now it's finally cheap enough to be successful. Finally, clean energy sources can be used 24-7. Finally, we can bring power to parts of the world that have never seen it. Finally, we can usher in a future where we use less of this and get cleaner air and turn back climate change. It's as simple as a switch. It's been proven and tested by Yushan, but to make this happen, we need to build a fully functioning prototype. That's where you come in, because Switch isn't funded by Fat Cats. It's funded by us. Together, we're gonna help Yushan build Switch. So let's do it.